Hello, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. To make this bracelet, I'm going to be using a 20 gauge wire. You can use a thicker wire, but my beads will only fit onto the 20 gauge, so that's why I'm using the 20 gauge, which is, is 0 0.08 millimeters. And then for the embellishment, I'm going to be using the 26 gauge wire. And then I've got these rather attractive AB Agate faceted beads, which I'm going to be using. So for the 20 gauge wire, I've cut a length of 35 centimeters, just enough to go around your wrist and to make your clasps at the end. Then you're going to need six pieces of the 26 gauge wire, and those are about 70 centimeters each. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a hook. Now, you can do this separately, but I find it's a lot easier if you've got a longer piece of wire to work on than it is when you're working on a very, very small piece of wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my little cloth and straighten my wire. So from the top, I'm just taking my pliers and going down about three centimeters, and then going to bend it over so that it lies parallel with each other and lies flat against the other one. Then take the back of your pliers and start squashing that as close together as you can. So if you use the back of your pliers it works a little bit better. Don't squash it all in one go, do it very gently so you don't break the wire. So now we've got our piece that's looking like that. Then what you're going to do is, for myself personally, I like to hold my wire so that the piece that I'm turning is actually closest on the inside so that it doesn't buckle. So we're going to now wrap this around our shaft. So just lifting it up and then holding it tight, gently wrap it around your shaft or your base wire. And then just tighten that so it doesn't poke anybody. So now what I'm doing is at about two millimeters down, just so that when we do the circle, it goes into the center. Just bend your wire a little bit in so that you've got an angle like that, then place your pliers underneath and make a complete circle all the way around. So that our loop looks like that. Now what we're going to do is in this tiny little gap here, we're going to wrap this wire around that. So taking your pliers and holding this in place so that it doesn't lose its shape wrap your wire around so we've got a really nice smooth finish to it so just keep going around and now because we have the cut off end from the other one which might be a wee bit sharp I'm going to actually put a swirl on there to finish this top wire off so just cutting it down a wee bit once again taking Round those pliers, putting it right at the tip so you can get a nice swirl. Just start going around. I've just taken my pliers now to help make the circle go nicely around. I'm going to fold it, fold it upwards so that it lies flat on top of all the wires that we wound around the main wire and then just squash that down. So your little clamp clasp is looking like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just take the round nose pliers once again and placing it just below the halfway mark like that. We're going to fold it inward 
to make our little hook. At the end of the hook, we're just going to bend this tiny piece up just to make it so that it looks like a hook. So I'm taking two pairs of pliers because it's quite tough, this little hook, and just bending it slightly upwards. So your little hook looks like that. And now we're going to put that aside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to divide them into two groups. So three for one side and three for the other side. So now you're taking your wires. All you want to do is try and get them as straight as you can. And then divide it so that you can find the center piece. So just folding it in half and then pulling the wires together to roughly get your center piece like that. And now we're going to attach that. Don't forget to leave a wee bit at the bottom, probably about 10 centimeters, and then attach your wires by placing them on there, and then just wrapping the wire around, making sure that you're using two all wires together to wrap it around once, and then just to secure it again, wrap the other side around as well. So we now have those wires attached. So now we need to add a bead. So going to the opposite end, just add the bead and bring it all the way down to where the wires are meeting. Now we need to attach the second group of wires. Once again, the same principle, fold it in half, get the halfway point, and then attach it above the bead. So placing it at the back of the bead, so it in place, and then just attaching that by going around, making sure that you're working and taking all the wires around with you, so around once on the one side, and then the other side as well. So that they are facing outward. Now push it down as far as you can go, closing it all in. Now you need to add another bead. So now that we've got the beads, and the wires all in place. Now what we need to do is taking the bottom set of wires, the first ones that we put on, straightening them so that they're as straight as what you can get them. And then we're going to be going over the two beads and wrapping it around And then the same with the left hand ones. Straighten them all out, take them up around the top bead, and that secures those two beads in place. Now you need to add another bead. So every time you rotate, Every time you go around with one, you need to add a bead. So just adding the extra bead now, because it always has to go over two beads. And that's that one in place. Now we're working once again from the bottom wires. Same thing, straightening them all out, pushing the beads tight, holding them all in place, and moving them all the way up, around, over the base wire to secure it in place. So it looks like that. And then the same on the other side. Going over the top of those wires. Making sure that all these wires are flat. Pulling up. And we're 
back in place now so you can see the pattern starting to form with the two beads and the looping around. Now we need to add another bead. So every time you cross over you need to get a new bead on and then all you do is continue wrapping in exactly the same manner until you've got the length that you require. So just showing you one more. We've got to take the bottom wires, moving them up, and around the base wire. Making sure it goes out to the side again. Keeping your wires all flat next to the bead. Same with the left hand side. Straightening the wires, bringing them up across and over the top and round the base wire. And then just continue until you've got the length that you need. So I've continued braiding all the way down to the end where we're coming to put on the last bead. So I'm just going to put the last bead on. And now we're going to be finishing this all off. So now taking the bottom ones and going up as if you're going to be going around. But now what we're going to do is we're going to separate the wires. Separate them individually. Starting from the inside one, we're going to wrap it around. Wrap it around the bead twice just so that it's out the way and then we're going to trim that wire off so I'm just taking my cutters make sure that you're only cutting that particular wire and then take your flat nose pliers and just close off so that it doesn't scratch anybody I like to do it on the top of the bracelet so that it's not rubbing against your skin underneath. The same with the next wire. So we take the second wire and then wrap that one around twice so that it ends on top of your bracelet and then cut that off. And then take your flat nose pliers again and just squash that wire down so that it's not going to catch on to anybody. And now the same with your third wire. And then trim that off. And once again, flatten it down. So that's one of them done. So now we're going to take the left hand one and going up and doing the same and then separating the wires to go around. So going around twice and finishing on the top and then trim that down. Once again, close, squash it down so that you don't have any sharp edges. And now we're back on to the second wire. The same again. And just continue doing all the wires in exactly the same way until you've finished them all. And now we've come to the last set of wires and we're going to do exactly the same by wrapping it around single wires at a time. So wrapping it and then trim that off. Every time you cut a wire off, make sure that you squash it down so that you don't have anything protruding. And then just complete all the wires until the end and then I'll show you what to do. So now I've finished off all the wires and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a wrap loop at each end. So what you're going to do is you just want to get that little gap there. And you're going to just bend it over so that you've got a bit of an angle 
take your round nose pliers again and we're going to go all the way around so that we've got a loop so I'm going to go all the way to the back of my pliers because I want the biggest loop that I can get so placing it on there and then just winding it around until you've got a complete loop like that and then hold it with your pliers and then wrap the wire around the little space so that we can close it up so that we've got a nice seamless finish to it. And then bring your wire to the top and then you can cut that down to whatever size loop that you want. So I'm going to just cut this one down just a wee bit so that it's not quite as long. So just cutting that off. Once again taking your round pliers right to the very end and then just start rolling it in. I'm taking the pliers now and just helping it along so that it can go round to sit just on top of the wires like that. And now we're going to finish off the other side. And now all we have to do is bend this into place. Now you can see on one side they're pretty much both the same. They look the same. So make sure when you're doing it that you've got your little embellishments on that side that are going to be facing upward. And then just you can use a mandrel to do this or you can just bend it with your hands to the shape that you require. Go in small little areas, not bending it all in one big go. So just continue going. So I finished the bracelet off now. And now we're going to just add a little hook. So now we want the hook to lie in that position. So when it attaches, it goes like that. Now to connect these two, I'm going to be using a jump ring. So you need to make sure that the two that you're connecting it to are lying flat next to each other so when you connect the jump ring the hook stays straight so just taking a pair of pliers and then we're going to connect our jump ring holding it near the opening and then just twist it slightly so that it opens and then we're going to just hook the two pieces on and then close those up and then our hook attaches like that. When you're doing hooks for your bracelets it's always better to have them hanging loose because then it makes it that much easier to attach them so you don't need two people to hold it together you can just attach it like that yourself. And there's your bracelet completed. And that's what the bracelet looks like on. If you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.